That is absurd. Come on, man. Well, that was interesting. I'm about out of tricks here. Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John. This big orange beast behind me is a JLG 80 foot lift that I recently bought. Got a whole video on buying it and getting it running again. But there's a lot of work that I didn't do in that video. I need to do the general maintenance. I need to do the oil and hydraulic filters and all that kind of stuff. But it's also not running right. Uh, something with the carburetor, I think either the choke is sticking on it seems to run very rich and it stumbles a lot and it stalls a lot. So I want to address that in this video. And then I've also got an issue with the kingpin on that wheel there and that's on the steering axle. So that makes this the steering very difficult. It also makes the process of extending and retracting the axles much more difficult. And that's annoying because sometimes I do need to retract the axles to go to a different location. So I want to address both of those in this video. I have some tree work that I need to do and I need to do it soon. The trees are dead. There's nowhere to drop them and they're going to fall down and they're going to smash something, either a house or a fence or a propane tank. I got to get this thing fixed and get it going so that we can get that job done. So let's see what we can do. I change it to platform control the engine died. Usually it will stumble for a little while and then die but Definitely too low on platform. Doesn't seem too bad there. See, I just turned the ignition off and it kept running for a little while. I don't know. Let's see what I can figure out on this thing. Unfortunately, the engine is oriented with the exhaust on this side. So the intake, everything on the fuel is on the other side and is not very accessible at all. Going through the, the manual, there are many different engines for this machine and apparently different variations of this engine. I've finally figured out kind of where I am. So this is the automatic choke. This is the air intake here and that's going down into the carburetor here. And this is the governor. So first thing I noticed, this hose right here, I doubt this is the issue, but it's very cracked and it's actually kinked. That is connected to the crankcase. You know, I think the fact that the engine runs pretty good on ground control tells me that this isn't a major issue right now, but I will replace that hose. What I do wanna do is take this off so that I can get a look at the choke and see how it's choking and also see if it's choking. And nothing is accessible. This probably doesn't look bad on camera, but this is a pain in the butt to work on. Here, you can get a better look at that cracked hose. There's an adjustment on this, and according to what I'm seeing in the manual, it's quite out of adjustment. The other thing I see is this uh, spins freely, so that might not be making a good connection. Let's move over here, give it a start, and see if that thing, well, it's choked already. Let's see what it does when I try to run it. I mean, that's really what matters, isn't it? Well, that was interesting. 
So now the ignition and the key are off, but this thing's staying open. It moves freely. There's just a little pin here that this spring hooks over and obviously applying electricity to it causes it to move. I didn't quite have this choke figured out yet. It has a wire going to it and I was convinced it was an electric actuated choke, but that's not the case. The choke actually works on heat and some of that heat comes from the engine, but the other heat comes from that wire, which runs a resistive element. So when everything's cold, the choke will be closed, but once everything warms up, the choke will open. Sorry if the footage isn't great. This is not an ideal workspace. All right, this may be a horrible decision because getting it back on is gonna be fun, but I'm gonna pull this carburetor. I can't get to the choke pull-off adjustment. And I'm thinking with the general lack of maintenance that this has had over the last many years, uh, the chances that I'm gonna find a partially clogged jet or something in the carb is probably good enough that this is gonna be worth it. Of course, because I'm doing it, I probably won't find anything and it won't make any difference. <laughs> Good news is there's only two nuts that are holding it on. The bad news is one of them is like pretty much totally blind. She ain't playing nice, I can tell you that. All right, now that hose has some slack on it, so let's cut it. All right, here's our carburetor. So this was the choke, and I can see down in there, it hits a stop. Yeah, that's the pull-off adjustment down here that, of course, I was coming at this from the top and you can't see anything and the valve cover's right there, so I, there's no way I could get to that. So that's part of why I took the carb off. There's another adjustment here and another adjustment there. And of course, they're all nearly inaccessible the way you have access to this thing. Now that I've had a look at them though, it'll be easier. There's definitely fuel in this. There's a bowl. I wonder if it's just flooding. It might be that the needle valve is failing in here. Hmm. I see crud right there. That looks like a pickup tube. Well, where'd that come from? Like that? Probably. <clears throat> so this is supposed to be the fuel shutoff valve, and I'm not convinced that it's working. It sounds like it's wet inside. It is, it's dumping gas on me. And the reason I'm not convinced it's working is sometimes when I go to shut the machine off, it just keeps running. So I may need a new one of those. That's our needle valve. No fuel in the float. There's some crud down in there. My hands are so dirty, but there, maybe you can see that. Some schmutz. Hmm. I just opened up something on that tube. Yeah, that's a rock hard diaphragm there. Yeah, I need a rebuild kit for this. <laughs> that thing is 
It's like a piece of cardboard. Those are supposed to be pretty flexible. All right, let's go call JLG and see if I can get a rebuild kit. And while I'm at it, assuming this thing isn't too expensive, I'm going to get a new one because I don't think it's supposed to be full of fuel. I ordered a rebuild kit. Kind of pricey, 84 bucks, but a new carb was 700 so, hmm. I guess that was an easy enough decision. So this is a 12 volt battery charger. This is a 12 volt fuel shutoff valve and we can test it very easily. In this position, it's an off. So when I apply power, it opens the valve. So that works fine. You know, the fact that it was full of fuel is probably because the carburetor was flooding and has nothing to do with this. So this is fine. Did I mention I priced a new one? I think it was 150 bucks. Actually, no, it was 200 and something. It was absurdly expensive, but thankfully this one works. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and spray everything down with carb cleaner and get it all good and clean before the parts get here. It's actually a bimetallic spring and it hooks over this, which that's what's actuating the choke. And that spring hooks on that peg right there. What's going on here is that in order for the choke to open, this needs to go that way. Well, this is going to get hot when the engine gets hot. And when this bimetallic spring gets hot, here's a heat gun. You can see that it moves in that direction and that's going to pull the choke open. You then rotate this to make the, the choke close. It's based on what the ambient temperature is. So they're right there. It's at a 32nd of an inch and that's where it should be at 70 degrees. But right now it is 80 degrees from this reference line. I should turn it two clicks counterclockwise. So I should be right there. Now we just need some parts. All right, while we're waiting on the carburetor rebuild kit, I'm gonna work on some other things. First and foremost, let's change the oil. It's draining very fast. Well, that's gonna be draining for a while. Yeah, one, two, three, four, the wires are labeled. Ow! Knew that was coming. Totally black, definitely running rich. The plugs were so tight I used a breaker bar to remove them. I don't think this thing's been maintained in quite a while. Four thirty oh nine. I think it's time to change the air filter. So the engine is on the right side, I guess we'll say. The other side is the gas tank and the hydraulic oil. Now this hydraulic oil looks good. Seems to be functioning fine. There's 55 gallons of it. To, uh, to replace that would cost a fortune, and I'm not gonna do it. But I am gonna replace the filters. So this is a breather filter, and then I'm pretty sure there's another filter underneath this. 09 again, 2736. Well, this thing only has like 2830. So since 09, it looks like it's been run 100 hours, and that's the last time maintenance was done. <laughs> Let's see what we have behind door number one. A filter. 2120107. They sent me the right part.
This guy also has a fuel filter. This is what Napa sold me. It's bigger, but I think the fuel line looks like it'll fit. All right, this oil filter is not the most accessible thing in the world. Oh wow, it wasn't tight. And of course, it's going to make a mess. And not too bad. Well, this thing has finally finished. If that was a regular screwdriver, it wouldn't matter, but it's one of the ones with all the little parts that you can enter. Ah, oh, damn it. Yep, there she is. Well, it probably won't rust anytime soon. I really like this screwdriver, by the way. I have a link to it in my Amazon store. It's great when you, you need to work on something but you're not sure what kind of driver you're gonna need. These are nut drivers, and then it's got obviously your small Phillips and regular, your big Phillips and regular, and then it's even got some Torx bits, and then some square drives. All different size nut drivers there. That'll work. Looks good. Now I'll uh, check that again after I run the engine because some may go in the filter. Might have to top it off. Hey, hon, look what I found in the yard. I got you some mushrooms. Oh, Deep. mushrooms. Yeah, they look pretty much like the ones at the grocery store. It'd be good for you. You think? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really think you should eat that. <laughs> I guess two can play at this game. <laughs> Carb kit. Ooh, instructions. There's that diaphragm that I need. Yeah, that thing's very different. Look at that, it's got a gasket attached to it. Hmm. Yeah, very pliable, flexible. Those diaphragms can really affect how they run, and just replacing that might be a, a big change. So, okay, yeah, that's our float valve. And this is the seat. This is where I'm putting old stuff. So we don't get confused. Okay, so new needle, new seat. New spring and plunger, I guess I would call that. Well, I just replaced that diaphragm, but unfortunately the shot was out of frame. So just trust me, I took the old one out, put the new one in. All right, that's one rebuilt carburetor. This hose here that was all kind of kinked and cracked up uh, comes from the crankcase right, right there. That would be adding heat right down the throat of the carburetor and would probably contribute to that uh, choke opening. And I suspect if that was not 
functioning if it was not open, well, that could have been part of the problem too. Put this hose on. See that hose clamp used the smaller, that doesn't go on there. You just pop this out and then that'll go on there. Love it. Let's crank it up and see if it'll start. I just realized I forgot to hook up the throttle. That was on full throttle there. Bad John. Change it over to platform and see, that's where it usually would stall. Well, that sounds great. That's not close to stalling at all. It's supposed to throttle down, but it's obviously supposed to continue to run. That sounds perfect. Hell yeah. So this is the kingpin. I cannot get grease to go down that. I have tried heating it, I've taken the Zerk, I've replaced the Zerk, I've reached down inside trying to clear it out. I sprayed penetrating lubricant in there and then tried to heat it and obviously used the pressure of the grease gun. Nothing works. And, and it's really a pain because it doesn't steer well and whenever you extend the axle, this, this wheel needs to move and it's very difficult to move. So it's just making a lot of, a lot of work, plus it's just going to wear out that kingpin eventually. So I gotta fix it. So this bottom one, if I remember right, is okay. I think it takes grease. Memory might be failing. I don't think either one of them will take grease. All right. Big machinery like this makes you appreciate just how strong these bottle jacks are. My regular car jack wouldn't even stand a chance of jacking this up. So this machine weighs 32,000 pounds. So there's about 8,000 pounds per wheel. This wheel should be free to turn. <laughs> yeah. That would be the problem. For reference, this wheel with the tie rod still attached turns pretty easily. All right, so here's the pin. It goes through and it has this flange and it's bolted in place and the bolts are wired so they can't back off. Obviously I need to undo that, but the motor's in the way. So first step, take the motor out. All right, let me go do the other side. There we go. Man, you would think a big machine like this, there'd be plenty of room for everything. I keep getting in uh, pretty tight quarters. Bet that's gonna be fun to get back on. See that oil back there? There's a gear oil reservoir on the other side of that wheel and I think it just came through the, the center hole. I have both king pins exposed, so now I have to get them out. As soon as I take them out, that wheel is going to want to fall off. So I'm going to do one at a time, obviously. I don't want the wheel falling off. Let's do the bottom one first, because I think I'm going to be able to take the bottle jack from underneath and push it up out. All right. Put this board wedged under the tire so it's not going anywhere. It is lifting the whole thing up. Don't really want to lift it up too much because then it'll come crashing down when that thing moves. 
See, that should be pushing through there, and it's not. See if we can get this thing to twist. Will not budge. It is really something. Well, here I was thinking the bottom one might be easier because I could use the bottle jack to push on it, but maybe a hammer is going to actually do better. Bigger hammer. Ooh, it moved. We have movement. Good grief. Takes some force to move that thing. now. The amount of force produced by a sledgehammer is difficult to calculate. It all depends on the deceleration time. How quickly does whatever you're hitting cause the hammer to stop? But I can tell you the force is very high, higher than you might expect. There are several instances of people failing to remove things with 50 ton presses and then succeeding with a sledgehammer. Here you can see how bone dry that thing was. And I guess that's where the, the grease was supposed to be coming out. Wow, even with the pin out, it still won't grease. That should be enough. Stuff was in there like cement. Now this should go right through. Yep. While the top pin is still out, I'm going to try to get the bottom pin to move. It should be easier since the bracket can wiggle a little bit now, right? Here I'm using a chisel under the flange trying to force the pin to come up. I am not being gentle with this thing and it will not budge. Well, since that wasn't working, I decided to go ahead and put the top pin back in. It spins very easily now. Yep, it's taking grease. So I've really mangled this bottom one trying to get it off. I feel like I really shouldn't give up on it and I should get it out of there so that I can grease that one too because I'm going to end up with the same problem. Yeah, I've come this far. I'll keep fighting it. You can see actually it's not frozen in this section, it's frozen in this. It's one inch thick. Maybe I could get enough heat on that to, um, to do something, but these hoses are all in the way. The weight of this side, this wheel, is being supported on that pin, which is seized in this plate here. So that's what I'm primarily working on heating.
Well, I just melted the aluminum heat shield, but it still hasn't moved. Let's see if a couple smacks with the sledgehammer will do anything. Well, it'll break my sledgehammer. <laughs> I'm about out of tricks here. I don't need to get this apart that bad. I've actually got it to where it rotates easily, which was the primary issue. Now I'm just upset that I can't grease that. So what I'm gonna try to do is heat the pin. I'm gonna get the pin smoking hot. I've got the grease circ in, and I'm gonna see if while it's hot, I can get that obstruction to push through and uh, let me grease the darn thing. Uh, that would be a successful repair at this point. I don't have to get it apart. This has gotten to the point where this is not really worth my time anymore. Right now, it's working. I can't grease it. I don't even know if I'll ever put enough use on this machine for that to be an issue. As long as it keeps moving freely, I don't have a problem. I just sprayed it down real well with PB Blaster. I am going to let it sit, let it soak, and then I will try jacking it up again. If that doesn't do it, and it's going to take more fighting, then I'm just going to put it back together and call it done. We'll see if anything happens after this cools off. I doubt it. And uh, you guys let me know what you would do on this. All right, it's the next morning. It cooled down and it's still stuck. You know, sometimes you just need to sleep on things. I'm sitting here thinking about it overnight and it's like, if I could just get this thing in my shop press and actually use this 20 ton bottle jack to put 20 tons on it, I could push it out of there. But when I start pushing, the machine starts lifting. There's probably 8,000 pounds or four tons of down pressure right here. Well, then I realized I've got the makings of a shop press right here. It's not gonna take much work. I'm gonna press this thing out of here. This is a piece of one inch plate. So now, as this generates more and more force, it's not pushing against gravity. It's pushing against this metal plate, which is strapped to this. So either the welds are going to break, the pins are going to come out, or the jack is going to get to 20 tons and the thing still doesn't move. I highly doubt that. 20 tons is a lot of force. Man. There's a lot of force on that thing. It's kind of making me want to get away from it. That is absurd. So now it's bending this thing, I think. See how much has opened up there? Come on, man. It moved. Finally. <laughs> man, this thing is ridiculous.
Man, what a fight. So I'm gonna get some support under this wheel so that it doesn't drop down and make this impossible to put back together. Man, every step of the way. She don't wanna play nice. I win. Top of my bottle jack is right there. I had to push that thing the entire way. So there's all the plugged up stuff that was preventing me from greasing this thing. You have to use a drill bit. You can't even get it out with a pick. So I'm sure you're wondering about this part here. Well, that part actually is not involved when the pin is fully installed. In fact, those marks are where I was able to hit it with an air hammer. It was sticking out below. So I'm going to take that to the belt grinder. A little grease on this baby and hopefully she'll slide right in. I'm tired of fighting with it. Maybe this time she'll play nice. Oh, look at that. Now for the point of this whole thing, <clears throat> can I grease it? And the answer is yes. Boy, that moves so easy now. That's a beautiful thing. I thought about uh, grinding these back to flat. I don't have any orange paint that's going to match this. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff up here where I heated it that doesn't have any protection on it now. I'm going to leave those there. They're not interfering with anything and it's a good reminder for me. Grease your kingpins. <laughs> and I'm just going to cover them with some fluid film. Fluid film is good stuff to keep things from rusting. It's got a funny smell too that I like for some reason. I think a lot of people think it's a nasty smell, but yeah, I don't know. The engine's running right. The kingpins are right. Let's go get some work done. So this thing's kind of hard to drive with the axles ex extended. It wants to go into the ditch all the time. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it into the lady's driveway that I'm going to work on her house. She's my closest neighbor, by the way, so this isn't too far for me to drive the lift there. So I'm gonna go ahead and retract the axles. It'll make driving the whole way a lot easier.
So this is one of the jobs that I had in mind when I bought my lift, actually. So we've got four dead trees in this yard with nowhere to drop them. This guy right here is the worst. That guy's pretty tall. The fence means you can't drop it that direction. There's a house right here. There's a propane tank right there and more fence around back. The only real way to take that thing down is with equipment. Bucket truck or say a boom lift. This one beside it, the top has already fallen out of that, so it's not quite as bad, but it's also very close to this propane tank, as is that guy right there. You could try to rope it and pull it back into the woods, but that's risky. And then finally, same deal with this one. It's right beside the fence and probably going to destroy the fence someday if we don't take it down. I got to get a boom lift through that gate, which has a 10 foot opening, so it's going to be tight. to do that tree first got a harness on and I'm clipped into a lanyard and I extended the axles again off camera I want to go a bit higher and this is the control to raise the boom. This is the control to drive the wheels. Oh my god. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> I just hit the uh, the drive function which I should not have done. That'll get your attention when you're up here. Here's an instant replay from another angle. That may not look like much on camera, but trust me, that got my adrenaline going. All right, I think I am good there. I can take this off.
next I'm going to do this dead limb here and then that dead tree there and then I'll swing around and get those two. This is not good. I got that limb down and I was bringing the boom down so that I could move the wheels. It's not real fun to drive when you're up in the air. And uh, do you see the machine? Does it look kind of shiny to you? Yeah, it is spraying hydraulic fluid everywhere. And I am afraid it is from the main cylinder. Oh, <laughs> that hurts. So, uh, yeah, then that happened. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, look at this. See how that's dry under there? That's all covered in oil. See, it's sprayed on the tire and the oil tank. Sight glass is right at the bottom. So I've probably lost five gallons of oil. So I guess uh, I'm going to end the video here and uh, see what I can do about this cylinder. That is a big cylinder. I've never rebuilt anything that big. I'm not even sure I'd be able to get it apart. That one may be going to the hydraulic shop. Well, fighting with that kingpin, I thought I had won the battle. And maybe I won that battle, but apparently that was just round one. <sighs> Looks like round two's coming. More work to do, more content for you guys. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.